So this episode is called Deep Six. And it was an episode, I can I can say that. Yeah. It existed, uh, it, it, it did. It wasn't the worst version of this crappy plot, but like I said, the plot is a bit inherently crappy, so... Mm. That sums it up pretty well. Also, I just had a visceral hate reaction to the word trident throughout the whole episode. I'm not going to ramble about why, but just... It, it was hilarious to me that a big plot of this was toxic waste and a guy called Trident. Huh. I'm not going to rant about why, because that will take the whole half hour. <laughs> okay, so this is Deep Six. In this episode, uh, the Tea Titans have to go underwater because toxic waste? Dude stole some toxic waste, and I have to say, when those barrels were rolling around the deck of the ship, my brain was just singing, rolling, 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 toxic barrel <laughs> rolling, 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 we're all gonna die. It's been a thousand years since I've watched The Simpsons. <laughs> Basically. So in this episode, yeah, they come across this villain named Trident, but he somehow ends up uh, just damaging their uh, underwater vehicle, so they have to find a small underwater cave to sneak into to survive, with the help of this uh, hero named Aqualad, who's obviously related to Aquaman, a character we will never see in this <laughs> series. <laughs> but that you all know exists because the Big Bang Theory won't stop mocking him. <laughs> God, no, no, now I remember the Big Bang Fairy exists. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, that was too cruel of me. I was like, Aqualad turns up and my first thought is, hey, it's that other guy. Because, because, you know, my first experience of DC cartoons is Young Justice, where Aqualad is Calder. And then then I'm guessing his other mate was based on this Aqualad. Now it all makes sense. I suppose so. Honestly, my immediate thought is that he probably dies and gets replaced with the other one, just like a Robin. <laughs> one dies, just get a new model. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, maybe he turned into his own version of Nightwing. Night Shark. He's already got the color scheme for it. True. <sighs> okay, anyway, uh, Aquad is just, uh, tries to go out to stop Trident because he's one of Ad- the Atlanteans. So he needs to stop. But Beast Boy tries to interject. They argue a lot. They try to stop him. They argue a lot. They try to stop him. They argue a lot. They realize there's more than one of them because he's cloning himself. They trick some of the clones, but then more clones have to come out and they have to destroy the cave in order to trap them in there forever. And then Aqualad becomes an honorary member of the Teen Titans. Episode. Yeah, the core of the plot is the stupid, competitive bullshit between Beast Boy and Aqualad, who, you know, turns up and saves Beast Boy's friends and has Starfire and Raven drooling over him because they've never seen Calderam. <laughs> yeah. Or half of the male superheroes in this universe. Apparently. Yeah, that that was really kind of pointless because it didn't seem to be there for anything except going hey he's attractive in a conventionally japanese bishy way i guess and also just to piss beast boy off a little bit more yes i think the one thing that surprised me about this episode is that i i went into it assuming that both of them were kind of being assholes but in reality, I felt like Beast Boy was 90% the asshole in this situation. Beast Boy is projecting pretty heavily, and it, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. They do actually kind of highlight that it was entirely Beast Boy projecting some, own conf- some of his confidence issues. Because Aqualad was being a perfectly decent guy the whole time. He was just annoyed by Beast Boy being an asshole to him. I did like Aqualad's line of, I don't think I'm better than you. Maybe you're better than me. Who cares? All that happens is, all that matters is catching Trident. I'm like, fucking thank you. I mean, the whole plot is still, I, I mean, I suppose the whole point of these plots is that it's dumb to be competitive. You all have, everyone has their own strengths and yeah, but... You know, and it's kind of, you don't need to get tied up and be, if you're better than someone you're meant to be working with. And But on the other hand, you know, uh, they spent the entire episode showing a character who was supposed to like doing that. Yeah, it's just, uh, the alpha male bullshit gets boring about ten minutes before it even starts. So, and I also spent half of it just being annoyed that they're so busy getting in each other's way that nobody notices that Trident isn't everywhere at once. He's clearly got multiple people. I I mean, I thought his look was just a costume, so I'm like, the costume is not that hard to replicate. There can be multiple people swimming around. Jesus Christ, how did it take you so long to figure this out? Yeah, 
Like, at least in that other episode that where the story was stupid based on arguing. Like, it had a, some really, really good fight scenes. Here the fight scenes were swimming underwater. Eh? Basically. I think the only one that came out really good is the one where it, um, Beast Boy started using some creative shape-shifting, like, turned into a turtle for defense and then became a giant crab yep. or some shit to attack, which was genuinely kind of creepy. He also made a very adorable squid for a lot of the episode. <laughs> yeah, the the fact he was able to show off his uh, facial expressions as a squid was pretty funny. That was very, very cute. R- uh, Raven, as per usual, had all the good lines on this episode. Like, early on, when Cyborg is accidentally turning off Beast Boy's mic, he's like, could you go ahead and accidentally leave it off? <laughs> yes. And he's showing off by turning into a whale, and he's like, don't be jealous, he just put on 300,000 pounds. I am so jealous. <laughs> yeah, that that line is pretty great. My standing favor is in response to uh, I think Cyborg's yelling about how everything in the submarine is broken, and Robin says, "Tell me something I don't know." Okay, we're all going to drown. <laughs> I love this child. What an optimist. <laughs> yeah, like, but genuinely, even compared to that other episode, this episode, I feel like I'm or I'm still underselling that I really, really didn't like it. <laughs> No. Like, like, just the whole plot was just dumb and not something anyone would want to watch. Yeah, the whole... I mean, like I said, I, I, the point of these plots is that this kind of posturing and competitiveness is dumb, but it doesn't change the fact that it's dumb and you have to put up with it being dumb yeah. for a really large portion of the episode. And I and I hate to keep, to keep bringing this series up, but it... It is true that Steven Universe would also do an episode where a character is suddenly much less likable, but they're still much more likable than what they did with Beast Boy in this episode. Yeah, the the problem is it's like, I don't dislike Beast Boy, but he is probably my least favorite out of the six, and it's because a lot of the time when he's on, when he's got any focus at all, he gets very grating. Yes. Yeah, and in particular, yeah, when his character for this episode is entirely him projecting some confidence issues onto this new bishy guy who swam up. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't get it. <sighs> there are a few amusing things. Uh, I did, first of all, <laughs> to continue a weird trend about this series, Trident is voiced by Mr. Krabs. See, my first thought was Lex Luthor from Justice League. I was just like, oh, Clancy Brown and your hammy villains. Oh, yeah, he is. He's Lex Luthor. I completely forgot that. Am I the only person on the planet who's not obsessed with Spongebob? Like, my, my brain goes other places first. <laughs> it's just that that's the first name that came up with his name. So Also, he's Lon Fane from uh, Avatar. Yep, he is. So, yeah, just... Cl- I, I feel like Clancy Brown hamming it the fuck up was the best thing about Trident, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they they turn that on and it's like, so if you're all, so if you're all perfect, which one's the most perfect? And it's so ridiculous that that works. At least it was funny and interesting with that. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, and pl- and again, it class. just comes with me with the, for me with the mental image of Clancy Brown standing in a recording booth yelling angrily at himself. No, I am the most perfect. <laughs> yeah, he actually recorded that out of context. <laughs> Clancy Brown was just having an issue. Okay, Clancy, because of your NDA with Teen Titans, we can't tell you anything else about the episode. We're just giving you your lines. Yell them as hamily as you possibly can. Okay. Did you say ham? Honestly, I think the best character in this episode was Tram. Oh my god, I don't know what he is, but he's adorable. Yes, I think he speaks in the ancient language of reversing audio. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't try playing that backwards. I'm curious about what it would do. <laughs> I, I'm curious, but not curious enough to be bothered to go do it right now. We have other things to do tonight. But, True. yeah, he's fucking adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, now the Teen Titans have an Aqualad. I guess. He, he'll always be second to Calderam in my heart. Oh, by the way, another just stupid thing about this episode, but not nearly as an annoying one, is when they first see Trident and they see multiple Tridents without knowing it's multiple Tridents, they have great instructions in order to pinpoint his current direction, like his current location, like, no, that way. Which way? Yeah. 360 degrees, learn them. Yeah, at, at least, like, you know, where? Six o'clock, something like that. Come on. You guys are working as a team... F- 
fighting. You need to be able to clearly communicate. Yeah. This, is, uh, this might be one of the instances of me expecting too much from my children's cartoons. I mean, most of the the shows that got me back into watching cartoons were in order: Avatar, The Last Airbender, Steven Universe, and Young Justice. So I have very high standards for my children's cartoons. God damn it! <laughs> True. Yeah, like I said, I'm sure Steven Universe would be the best at handling this plot and not making it terrible. Although I feel like it's one of those things they've tried to do a couple times with Lars, who isn't all that likable anyway. Yeah. And then it has the cheesy friendship ending, where they're friends now and running into the camera together laughing. How <laughs> happy with Raven and Starfire drooling in the background, because that's just... It, I get that they're trying to emphasize he's pretty and the girls like him because he's pretty, but it just... It's such a... Yeah. Kind of jarring way of going about it. I don't know. I can't really articulate why I dislike that so much, but it... <sighs> nah, I really don't. Oh well, so I'm sure we'll see Aqualad again someday, but until then...